this lecture I will introduce optimizing compilers and uh, the purpose is not to explain how they optimize code but instead what they can optimize and with that knowledge we can uh, write code which is um, fast but avoid uh, changing the source code with low level optimizations that the compiler can do automatically and I will talk about uh, these things. So uh, first, the, the very purpose of op using optimizing compilers is to reduce ex execution time and energy consumption. Okay, and uh, if we compare a commercial compiler with the GCC, uh, GCC is a very good compiler also in this version. And then we can see that um, uh, well, first of all, the, the code is uh, gzip in a benchmark and uh, uh, this is a com file compression program. And uh, what we can see is that uh, the code produced by IBM is uh, faster than that produced by GCC and uh, that is uh, very frequent. And it's the same f on Intel machines that the Intel compiler is better than the open source compilers, usually, almost always. And uh, without optimization, the code becomes much slower. So enabling optimization is really important. And what we want to do is to get as fast code as possible, but not waste time to write low level uh, things that the compiler can do automatically since that wastes our time and it wastes a uh, time to um, read the source code afterwards. So we should find a suitable level that is uh, good for both humans and compilers. Okay, so when the compiler has uh, read the source code and uh, identified tokens such as identifiers and operators and uh, keywords it will uh, actually during the same time uh, create a syntax tree and check that the syntax rules according to the language grammar are followed after that it will create a directed graph uh, uh, and um, the nodes are uh, parts of the code without branches neither br uh, well a branch at the end but the no branch such as into the middle here okay this is not allowed if there would <coughs> if there would be a, a say we can say there is a well not there but there if there would be a branch to that direction uh, say we have go to l this is not so nice but let's say we have that, then this would be a separate node. Okay, so no branches into the middle and only branch out at the end. And uh, th this uh, directed graph is used I during essentially all optimizations. So it is called the control flow graph and the nodes are called basic blocks and the edges are uh, the branches of course and when we the first thing we do when we analyze this graph is to find uh, something called dominance that we will come to soon but during this analysis it, it, we don't uh, we are not interested in what actually happens in in uh, a node so we ignore that and just uh, look at this as a, any uh, directed graph okay and now uh, for a first uh, definition namely dominance um, if we want to go from the start the start is where the function starts uh, to some other node uh, say we want to go to uh, this node V and uh, if every uh, path from the start 
to V includes U, then we say that U dominates V. So, for instance, <coughs> 1 dominates itself, since uh, on every path from S to 1, 1 is clearly on that path. And it also dominates 2, 3, 4 and E. But uh, 4 does not dominate 3, since we can go from start like that to 3. Okay, why would we want to know about dominance? Well, if we have computed, uh, say we have computed A times B here, and we compute A times B again, then if uh, uh, this instance of A times B dominates this one, now I say an instruction dominates, but it's really the, uh, the node, but there is, um, we can talk about dominance at the instruction level as well, and it starts with, with uh, um, the basic block. So if this basic block dominates this one, and the values, I mean, um, we have not redefined A or B in between, then the value of this must be the same, and we can actually uh, use that one instead, so we can save it to a temporary and use that temporary instead. And why? Well, since since 1 dominates 3, there is no risk that we come to this without first having computed uh, A times B and saved it in T. So this is very useful. And I will now uh, go very briefly through something uh, uh, how to, uh, not, not exactly how to compute it, uh, this uh, 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 dominance relation, but uh, just to, to, to give, give you a taste about how that can be done. And okay, so um, dominance, it's a total order uh, given that, I mean, uh, what, what I mean with that is that if we take all the nodes that dominate uh, this one, then we can compare, uh, okay, which dominates this one? It is, uh, we, first of all, we write it like that, 3. Uh, this is the set of nodes which dominate 3. Uh, and what is that? It is S, 1 and 3. Okay, and we, uh, uh, I said it's a total order, and with that we can compare all the nodes in this set and one of them must dominate the other. Okay. So uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that we can find the uh, node which is the closest of all these which um, dominate 3. We can find the one which is closest. And of course it's 3 itself, but if we exclude 3, then what we can do is to... First we can uh, write S, uh, 1 and 3, and since uh, we, uh, we want to find the node which is closest to 3, with, but not 3 itself, we can remove that. Uh, and then uh, we can compare all the nodes in what that are left. And whenever one of them dominates the other, we remove the one which dominates the other. So if we compare S and 1, uh, we can see that S dominates 1, so we can remove it. And uh, this assumes that we have already computed the DOM sets for each node. Okay, so what we say now is that 1 is the node which is closest to 3, that dominates 3. This is called the immediate dominator and it's written like that. E I dom 3 is 1. Okay. And uh, this uh, <coughs> I dom is uh, unique uh, for each node uh, except for S since it has no uh, immediate dominator. Since it has no, uh, I mean, it cannot have that. Okay, so 
this is what I said. And g uh, given that this immediate dominator is unique, we can create a tree. So from this control flow graph, we can uh, write the IDOM of each uh, node and it will become this uh, dominator tree. Okay, so what we actually do when we construct this dominator tree, it is not that we first find this set, but actually we, well, there are comp uh, compiler uh, books that do that, but that's a really uh, bad uh, way to compute the dominator tree. Uh, since it's very slow, but what we should do is to compute this dominator tree uh, first, and then we can find um, the DOM uh, for a vertex, for instance. Uh, DOM uh, 7, what is that? Well, it's uh, 7, and all of those which are going up here. So it's, well, I just marked them like that. Okay, let's see if that makes any sense. So uh, what this uh, means is that, or what this should mean is that to go uh, from the start, now called zero, this is the depth of search number of this. I mean, it's just uh, a traversal. Uh, and uh, uh, so what we say is that to go from zero to seven, we must pass uh, pass uh, these nodes. Okay, is there a way to go to seven without passing one, zero, one, two, six, and seven? Okay, how can we get to seven? Yeah, this is the only way. Okay, it's like that. Okay, and uh, what is the immediate dominator of four? Let's uh, remove that first. Uh, well, of four. Um, well, we can follow this up and see that it's uh, it's three. That is the immediate dominator. And w and uh, uh, why it does two not dominate four? Well, since we can go either like that or like that, skipping two. So two cannot be a, a dominator of four. Okay, this should be clear. And what we do when we have found this dominator tree is to traverse this tree and do optimizations during this traversal for some uh, optimizations. So this uh, tree is uh, extremely important and it's um, the version or actually the, the algorithm to compute this tree it is, uh, it was invented by uh, 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 Robert Tarian and uh, his PhD, well he did most of the work and then uh, his uh, PhD student uh, Thomas Lengauer at Stanford University and uh, that was uh, published in 1979 and it's still the fastest algorithm and it's really amazing but I will not talk about it. Uh, it's uh, introduced in the optimizing compilers course. Okay. Um, it, uh, okay, if you have heard about, I'm not sure you have, but if you have a, a, another compiler person uh, called Langer, Langer, it's his uh, brother, uh, Christian Langer. He has uh, done research, which has uh, become part of uh, LLVM for uh, loop parallelization. Uh, he led a, a group in uh, Passau. Okay. So, uh, that was that. Let's now look at loop analysis. So, assume now that we have already this uh, dominance relation computed. And we can do a depth of search of, of the control flow graph. And uh, we want to detect loops. So how can we detect loops? Well, first we should uh, 
uh, recall the th uh, four different kinds of edges in a directed graph when we do a uh, depth of search. First, a tree edge is when we uh, visit the vertex for the first time. So we, we uh, do this uh, depth of traversal uh, starting with zero and we start going there. So this is a tree edge. And then we can go there and there. So these are three edges. And then we continue there. Okay. And from uh, th three, we uh, take the next uh, successor and it will be uh, this edge, which goes up there. Okay. And now we come to an interesting thing, namely that the uh, head of this edge, I mean one, uh, dominates the tail. So we have one dominates three. Okay, and what does that mean? It means that <coughs> we have de uh, detected a loop. So what we can do now is to search backwards from three and collect nodes on this search backwards and say that all the nodes that we find are in a loop. Okay, then you may think there is a risk that we just go uh, astray and uh, miss one. Uh, no, we cannot because one dominates three. So there is no way to go to three without passing one. So we can just start searching backwards in this graph and eventually we come to one. And all the nodes uh, here constitute the loop. This is uh, called a natural loop. And uh, uh, during optimization, it's uh, common not to preserve the, uh, the while or for loop. Uh, instead, the compiler detects them again. I mean, it saw that there was a loop, but uh, it uh, does that again. Uh, since uh, all loops uh, are um, important and uh, not all loops are constructed with uh, uh, for or while or do while. So it has to do this uh, analysis. Okay.